If you've been around church for any length of time, you've probably been told that every Christian should have a ministry. But you may be wondering, what's that all about? How do I even start a ministry? Well, you'll be happy to know I looked it up for you. Here's what I found. First, you come up with a name and visit the California Secretary of State's website to find out if it's available. If it is, you'll need to draft your Articles of Incorporation, kind of like your Constitution, and have them filed by your incorporator, your lawyer, for instance. And uh, yeah, you're going to need a lawyer. You'll also need a board of directors, a set of bylaws, conflict of interest standards, compensation policies, and employer identification numbers, both federal and state. California is also going to want Form CT1 and then Form SI100. The IRS needs Form 1023, including the essay questions. When you eventually get your determination letter, you're all set to send Form 3500A to the California Franchise Tax Board and go through the process all over again with them. Then there's the banking, business licenses, human resources, facilities management, fundraising, accounting, tax returns, and somewhere in there, actually helping people. By now you're wondering, come on, is it really that involved? No, it's not. It's much worse. Seriously, those were just the highlights. I skipped a lot of steps, listed some out of order, and probably got a bunch of stuff wrong. I hope you weren't taking notes. Fortunately, there's an alternative, one that blesses people and pleases God, and you can get it going in two simple steps. Here they are. Step one, find a need. Step two, meet it. I know, it sounds too easy, right? I get it. I remember coming out of college in my 20s with a degree in theology and a burning desire to be a youth pastor. But that wasn't my job. No. My job was setting up and tearing down video equipment for a mobile church in Tulsa, Oklahoma. The work was hard, but what was even harder was watching their youth pastor with his cool hair and flip-flops chumming it up with the kids in his group. Eventually, it just got me angry. God, why can't I be a youth pastor? As the words formed in my head, I felt the Lord sort of grab me by the shoulders and say, look around you. And there was my crew five teenage boys. Suddenly my job wasn't just my job anymore. It was my ministry. I was a youth pastor. Some people wonder, what kind of ministry can I have if I don't have an official title or if my name doesn't show up in an organizational chart? What if I'm not cut out to be a group leader or a Sunday school teacher? What if I'm too musically challenged for the worship team? I guess my resume just doesn't measure up. Besides, who has the time? Oh well, too bad. It's a good thing we pay the professionals to do our ministry for us. Uh Uh-uh. It's time to start working that two-step plan. Find a need, meet it. The upfront ministries, they have their place. They're valuable and important. But the real work of the church, the part where we're really the hands and feet of Jesus, takes place behind the scenes. Every time we make a positive, personal connection with another person, It's what the Lord created us and equipped us for. God's given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts, the Apostle Peter said. Use them well to serve one another. For every heart that needs to be unlocked, God has made a key and you're one of them. Look around. You'll be surprised what you can open if you're, well, open. We'll be back next week with another new edition of Potluck. Please help us get the word out by clicking like and sharing today's post. We really appreciate it. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel or visit us at sgbic.com. In the meantime, see you Sunday.